So, for right now, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3. We're going to read verses 22 to 27. We're going to focus on verses 26 and 27. Father, thank you so much for your loving kindness and tender mercies towards us. Thank you for this tremendous word that you've given us. And Lord, we pray that your spirit will lead us to understanding your word, uh, Lord, and then a will to want to obey your word. Help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Mark chapter 3, looking at verses 22 to 27, the title of this message is Binding the Strong Man. Binding the strong man. Uh, look at verses 22 to 27. It says, and the scribes, the scribes were the experts, experts in the law of Moses. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. So he called them to himself and said to them in, in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? If the kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. And then he will plunder his house. Now, debt has become a strong man who is keeping us from being financially free. Jesus said in verse 27 that you cannot enter a strong man's house and, and plunder his goods unless you first bind the strong man. Now, I want to draw your attention to the word plunder. The, the Greek word is diapazo, and it means to plunder, but it means to rob thoroughly. The truth is that debt is a strong man who has invaded our homes. He has set up camp there and, you know, he's living the good life. He has taken over and he is having his way with us. If we're going to get rid of him, we have to bind him first. I want to draw your attention to the word bind. That Greek word is dale, and it means to tie, to fasten, uh, to bind, to restrain. It is also translated. The strong man must be restrained. He must be fastened. He must be uh, held down, tied up before you can gain control of your life. You have got to get the strong man out of your house. In order to do that, you must find a way to bind him. And before uh, we deal with how to bind the strong man of debt, there are four things you must know to prepare you to bind the strong man. Number one, we will never get ahead by paying off our bills on a monthly basis only. See, there's a lie that America has sold us and we have bought it. We think that if we just keep paying and paying each month that we are eventually going to get ahead. Not true. You will never get ahead that way. So that's the first thing you must understand. Number two, it is wrong to give the mortgage company two to three times more money than you really have to. For example, uh, let's say your home cost $200,000 for just the sake of an example, and it's a 30-year mortgage. At the end of 30 years, you would have paid $600,000 for that same house meaning that you're giving the mortgage company $400,000 in interest, which is a 200% profit for the mortgage company. And that is a waste of money in my little eyes. The mortgage company does not want you to know that there is another way. However, you can put a star by this statement I'm about to say. However, let me say this, paying off a mortgage early is a wise move for most people, and I underline most people. It may not be the best move for everybody. If your mortgage rates are low 
And if the tax, deductible, uh, tax deductible mortgage interest from a home loan reduces your tax burden by a significant amount, then from an economic perspective, you may be better off keeping your mortgage. But that is probably not the case for most people. So consider your overall financial picture carefully and consult a tax planner before deciding that you're going to tackle the Goliath of paying off your mortgage. Now, number three, the third thing you must know before you bind the strong man is you have to change your mind and your behavior. You, 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 you can actually pay off all of your bills, hold your seat in five years, five years and be totally debt free. This is an achievable goal that we're gonna look at in a few minutes. The fourth thing you must know before you bind the strong man is after you pay off your bills, you can take the money you were given away to the mortgage company and to the credit card companies, invest it wisely, and live for the rest of your life almost entirely off of the interest earned on the money that you were given away to the mortgage and credit card companies. That, too, is doable. Now, you might say, okay, Pastor Tony, I got you, I got you. If it's this simple, why are so many people, especially church people, not doing it? Why are they still drowning in debt? Why is it that so many people, you know, are not doing this kind of stuff and not debt-free? Okay, you want to know why? It's very simple. It's not that deep. It's not that hard. Write this verse down, Hosea 4.6. Oh, you're very familiar with it. Look at it in light of this that we're talking about. God says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. Now, I want to draw your attention to the Hebrew word for destroyed. The Hebrew word is dama, and it means to cease, to cut off, or to destroy. And he said that my people are cut off. They are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We're lacking knowledge because we have not seen things clearly. Why? The verse goes on to say, and don't miss this, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Why? Because they have rejected knowledge. That's what we need to see. It's not that they didn't get the knowledge and they're like, oh, I never heard that before. No, they heard and rejected it. That's a huge, huge difference. The word rejected, that Hebrew word is mas. And it means to abhor, to cast away, to despise. We have rejected knowledge. We have despised, we have abhorred, and we have rejected the knowledge that we heard. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They have heard the knowledge, but they say rejected it. In order to reject something, you have to get it. And then when you got it, you're like, I ain't doing that. You not only took the knowledge that you got, but you abhorred it. You despised it and ultimately rejected it. You said, well, what knowledge that, that I was given that I rejected it? Oh, I'm going to tell you. We went in detail with it last week, and I know you don't remember, so I'm going to remind you. Number one is giving God first, the tithe. How many people have abhorred and rejected or despised the tithe? See, you got the knowledge, but you rejected it about tithing, giving to God first. Not only that, I mentioned last week about cutting up the credit cards. Now, I heard of one person who did plastic surgery and cut up their credit cards. One person. Now, I'm not saying other people didn't, but you heard the knowledge and rejected it or despised it or ab abhorred it. So I'm not doing that. See, uh, stop uh, impulse buying. You were just at the grocery store this week and saw the candy bar in that magazine and that pack of chewing gum, and you still bought it. Impulse buying, you know, buying food or getting groceries when the, the, the last week's groceries are not gone. You're still doing it. So it's not like you didn't know this knowledge. No, you heard it and you rejected it. You abhorred it. You despised it. This is what we're talking about here. This is the stuff we, 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 we talked about on last week that we went in great detail, keeping a written budget. I mean, went back and did that. There's a few, maybe a couple people. So... This is what he's saying. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. And this is why you're still drowning in the sea of debt. This is why you're still at the bottom of the hill of your debt. 
Because you did, it's not like you didn't get it. You got it. I gave it to you last week and just gave it to you again. And you're going to reject the knowledge. Now, here's the thing. So I'm going to continue on, but I'm going to let that sit for a minute. I'm going to continue on. So it is possible to be debt-free in five little years. Five, five years. But in order for you to do that, you have got to come up with a new strategy and watch this word that you can write it and underline it and sacrifice on behalf of that strategy that you're going to get. You cannot continue to pay your bills month by month with no regard for your financial future. You can't do that. You need a new strategy. Okay, here it is, the five-year plan. Now, for the sake of learning, let's say we take two people, Mr. and Mrs. John and Sally member. They have the following bills. Discover, Visa, MasterCard. They got a home equity loan. They got a mortgage, and they have a car. Now, I mean, simple stuff that, you know, all of us have. So how can John and Sally member erase that kind of debt in five years? I mean, how many people would like to be debt-free in five years? Well, yeah, that's a good, good amount of people. Some didn't raise their hand. That's okay. That's all right. That's okay. And, and, you know, I'm still going to get this information. That's okay. I'm still going to do it. Now, the first thing, and this is critical, this what I'm about to say is the foundation of being able to get out of debt in five years. This is the foundation. You must come up with an extra $250 beyond what you're paying on your monthly bills. John and Sally member must do this. This is the first thing they must do. You say, well, why am I going to get $250 extra? Well, I'm going to tell you. I, I told you last week, but you don't remember. But I'm going to tell you. You can take that from your income tax return. And instead of spending it on a new TV or some new Jordans for the bad teenagers or a new iPhone because it's out, you know, that you, can, you, can get, you, you can get that $250. do not eat out as a family for a month. Watch this. Let's say you spend $50, $60. I'm on the low end on your family every Sunday to go out and eat plus tips for that waiter or waitress that was horrible. There's your $250 right there. Right there alone. Boom. Right there. Now, going back to our chart, take the $250 and add that to the first bill. That's the Discover card. And that will mean that you are now paying $270. $20, that's the monthly payment, plus the $250 you came up with, and that's $270 a month toward that bill. At that rate, John and Sally will pay off that first bill in two months. Once that bill is paid in full, then they can take on, uh, take that same $250 plus the $20 that they paid off the first bill and add that to what they're going to pay on their car note. That will give them a total of $573 for the car payment. At that rate, they will pay off the car in 16 months instead of three years. Once that's paid off, take that same $250 plus the $20, the first bill, plus the $303, the car note, and apply that to your home equity loan. Now that's $733 going towards that loan. It will be paid off in four months. Now, take the original $250 plus the 20, the first bill you paid off, the 303 car note, the 160 home equity loan, and the $30 visa payment, and in only one month, that bill is gone. Gone. Now, once that is paid, you take all that money, plus the $45 for the MasterCard payment, which is $808, and use that and pay off that bill. It would only take you two months. Two months. Now that all the bills are gone, now it's time to go after Goliath, the mortgage. Now, you take all that money that you're paying on those other bills, add that to the 890, Mr. and Mrs. John and Sally member, plus that 890 mortgage payment, they will have $1,698. With that amount, they can take on uh, that um, mortgage, and in three and a half years, Pay off a 30-year mortgage. Gone. In three and a half years, John and Sally member 
will be debt free. In three and a half years, they would have saved $151,000. Instead of giving it away, they can use that money for a variety of things. And I'm going to help you with that. Now, before I move on, I must say this, because I know how some of you are. While John and Sally are ganging up on their bills, they must maintain their monthly payments on the other bills until they get to them. Oh, I'm going to be paying that off anyway, so I ain't going to pay them. You, know, until I, until I, uh, you can't be fooled. I know how some of you are. You fool around like that. You got to maintain the monthly payment. Until you get to it, then you can gang up on them. Remember I mentioned last week, this is a game that you can be a part of. You're ganging up on your bills. Now, after three and a half years, John and Sally has $1,698 a month to invest in something that will pay them, let me just say, 10% on their money over 20 years. Uh, in two decades, they could have and will have $500,000 in the bank. Now, please don't think. That $1,698 per month is too much, too much to put in investments. Remember, had they not paid off the mortgage and the credit card folks, they would have been paying that anyway and would never see that money again, never. But instead, 20 years from now, rather than owing money, owing money on their house and all that stuff, John and Sally would have $500,000 in the bank. Now, here it is. This is important, especially for those of you who are my age and older. You know, we, we, we're getting old. And so because of that, we may have to do a little bit more in this area per month because we're getting old. Because if you're my age and older, 20 years from now, we 70 plus years old. So, so, I, so those of you who are young, if you're young in here, God bless your soul. If you, you can do this and God bless you 20 years from now, you, 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 you're not even 40, you know, and, and, and you will be set. I'm, I'm trying to help some of you here. I'm laying gold at y'all's feet. I'm trying to help y'all here. So for those of you who are a little, you know, a little older, like me and older, you know, 20 years from now, that does sound like the eternity, <laughs> you know. So you might have to do a little bit more. So now, now here's the thing. Take, let's say you take that $500,000 that you see sitting in the bank, you invest it, low risk investment. Let's just throw out a number for the sake of keeping it all even. Let's say low risk investment with about 10% annual return. And you're able to earn $50,000 a year in interest. Remember the widow in 1 Kings 4, the first message I gave? I know you don't remember. First message I gave, Elisha told her to live off of the rest, live off of the surplus. Now, I know that for some of you, your numbers are higher or lower than these. But the point is, to get to a point where somebody is paying you for your money and not the other way around. Having 50000 a year, like I said, your numbers may be a lore. At that rate, you will never have to touch the principal. You can live off the interest for years to come. You can retire earlier than planned, put your kids through college, pump money into the work of the church. You know, we got sanctuary built. We got children's ministry built out. We, you know, on top of that, we don't, have, we don't have the money. You have to build a junior high school space out. So there's stuff to be done and other worthy causes. Now, let me wrap it up with this. Now, for many of you, this sounds exciting. You're like, oh, man, I'm going to do this. But don't forget what Jesus said in Mark 3, verse 27, that we must first bind the strong man. He has invaded our homes and has taken over. He took our favorite chair, our, our lazy boy, he got the remote control in his hand, and he's going for it, turning to what he wanted to watch. He is fooling around in our house, but we must first bind him, and this is how it is done by ganging up on him. 
this is the kind of dude, you remember, you know, you, you were younger, there's somebody want to fight, and all of a sudden you get into a fight with them. Then all his friends start jumping into the fight. They ganged up on them. This is what we must do to, to the strong man. You can't beat him one-on-one. You got to gang up on that dude. Jesus also said in Matthew 9 and verses 16 and 17, he said, you can't put new wine into old wineskins or it will burst. You can't take this new attitude and, and pay off your bills the same old way. If you want to be debt free, you must take your new attitude and new knowledge and put it in a new container. And paying all your bills while uh, not making new ones is the new formula. Ganging up on your debt is the new formula. You must allow this new attitude about your finances to be lived out in new actions. And then may God help us in this journey as we're climbing out of debt to be debt free. But let me just close with this. God, this is the most important out of them all because it's great to be debt free and that's... That's a great thing, you know, to be up from up under that sort of burden. But there's a strong man of sin that Jesus had to bind at the cross. He was that strong that Jesus had to give his life to bind him so we can be forgiven. However, there's a strong man in many people's lives. It's a strong man of drugs. The strong man of sex, strong man of pornography. See, the porn and the sex, that, that, that goes hand in hand. People talk about today, well, I need to go to a sex therapist. And the first thing I will say is, are you watching porn? And now that the two go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. There's a strong man in some of your lives. I'm going to deal with the ladies first. You have a strong man in your life, and he's being physically abusive to you. But nowadays, I have to also go on the other side because there are also women today, very angry women today, who are abusing men. They will happen to be brought up in a home that said, you don't hit a woman, and she takes advantage of that. And she's now abusing you. God didn't create us with the words welcome on our foreheads so people can wipe their feet all over our heads. And many of you are dealing with this strong man and the Lord wants to help you bind him. And so this is the most important thing today is to deal with the strong man spiritually that we have trapped in our lives, that he's holding us captive to many kind of things today. And folks are just jacked up today. But the Lord wants to help you bind the strong man. This is where I celebrate recovery. If you need some additional help, I celebrate recovery on Tuesdays to help you, with, help you bind the strong man, whatever that is in your life. And the Lord wants to set you free from that. Set you free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you, Lord, will come upon your people here. Lord, that you would change their lives for all eternity. Lord, I pray for those who are here who have never accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. They never repented of their sin and prayed to receive you as Lord and Savior. I pray that today, Lord, that you will bind that strong man in their lives and help them to, be, to come and to accept you today. Lord, there are many who are dealing with strong men in their lives, and I pray that you will set them free today. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Move in the midst of your people in Jesus' name. Amen.